Okay. Good morning, brothers and sisters. This is from MSNBC. Pope apologizes for priest abuse scandal with sorrow and shame. And then he says this. We showed no care for the little ones. We abandoned them. And he's talking about this thing that happened in Pennsylvania where predator priests abused children for decades and had over a thousand victims. And if that was just the only thing that ever happened, the church would be, uh, the Catholic church would be, you know, this is a black mark on their soul. But it's far from the only time this has happened because this is globally, this is something that's happened in every country. I have friends in Ireland. It's a huge problem in Ireland. My mom was a Irish Catholic. And so let me just get back to his quote here and then we will talk about this global problem. With shame and repentance, we acknowledge as an ecclesial community that we were not where we should have been and we did not act in a timely manner, realizing the magnitude and the gravity of the damage done to so many lives. You know, that's not what you should be saying because, again, this is a global problem. You've, it's happened time and time again where you have priests that sexually abuse children you find pedophiles are coming into the priesthood and then it's covered up. It's not just priests. Some of them rise up to higher levels, bishops and things like this. And then it's covered up. Victims and their parents are threatened and harassed. I mean, this is not a, we, you know, we show no care for the little ones. No, you run a freaking pedophile ring for decades. A global pedophile ring where you have pedophiles coming into your organization all over the world and then you cover this their actions up that's a pedophile ring a global pedophile ring all right so i saw this was on facebook there's this really enthusiastic woman <laughs> who's talking about i don't know if she lives in pittsburgh or what but she is talking about some of the information and it's of what they did there and it's pretty brutal the, what I'm about to say is going to be uh, pretty graphic. It's pretty upsetting. So the grand jury report finds that uh, Cardinal uh, Whirl, who was the bishop of Pittsburgh at the time, made up this phrase, and it was called the circle of secrecy. See, the circle of secrecy, these code names and ways that like institutionalized cover-ups, especially like something like this, where they come up with a plan, right? They come up with a system that they employ, and they did this across the globe, where bishops and cardinals and these other higher-up people used methods. And what this woman's talking about are the same methods that were used in other places. See, this is not just some random deviant subgroup, right? This is something, this is a institutionalized system of covering up sex abuse which is just reason one why this is a pedophile ring. And he used this circle of secrecy while, pre while presiding over the cover-up of child sexual abuse by Pittsburgh priests when he was the bishop in, in the diocese. The grand jury report also says that um, Cardinal Whirl, who was the bishop at the time, was responsible for relocating priests and reassigning priests, priests who had several uh, severe allegations brought up against them of abusing of abusing children, uh, of raping children, um, really, really horrific. So if you understand this, if you have a pedophile, you have a convicted pedophile, someone you know, or at least you know for sure is a pedophile, and you relocate them in a new area with a clean slate, what do you think is going to happen? And so this is reason number two and again there's so many reasons just in terms of this report this is reason number two this is a pedophile ring if getting caught being a pedophile isn't enough to get you fired from your job as a priest as a religious person who's trusted i'll get into that in just a moment by these people's the parents the children and all these things when you break that level of trust and you're damaging kids in this way and you get relocated that's not enough 
for them to yank your collar, you know, or send you out and let you suffer the, the consequences of the criminal justice system, which is avoided constantly by these guys. I mean, they have power that is pretty much across the board. Here is a uh, screenshot when I made an earlier video about this and YouTube demonetized my video. Why would they do that? Because everybody knows this is true. You can't talk about this on YouTube. This isn't, I mean, it's mainstream news and they're receiving ads for this. You understand this? I'm an expert in the field. I worked in the field with sex offenders for years as a counselor clinician. So I say has merit and yet it got demonetized. This is something that's consistent. The police, uh, the media, everybody seems to be covering up for these guys or minimizing what's said about it. Now, in one instance uh, that the grand jury talks about, a mother went to the diocese uh, about her son's abuse at the hands of a priest, and she was uh, she was lied to. She was said that it was a one-time occurrence, and that had it and that it had been handled that turned out not to be true and that priest was just moved to uh, a different parish where he continued to abuse children um here's something that's really upsetting the grand jury report says several predator priests in pittsburgh were manufacturing child pornography on diocesan property so they were mani uh, they were making this child porn um, on parish grounds in parish rectories and it says that, that the group of priests uh, practiced uh, a sadistic kind of sexual violence using whips uh, and violence uh, against their victims. A lot of the boys uh, aged 9 to 12, some boys in their teens, several of them were given like jewelry after, these big crosses uh, that they were um, supposed to wear around. So these victims being given jewelry or being given money after they were sexually abused or raped. Here's the thing. You're somebody who is sexually attracted to kids. And I'm going to get into the whole thing about priests not marrying because that's part of it. And that's what you are. You're a pedophile. And you're looking at your options. And you see that there's an organization that will give you access to kids in a way that you're a trusted person. And you're going to be somebody who not only is a pedophile creep, but also somebody now who has power, access to children, and they're going to treat you like a celebrity. Oh, yes, Father. You're going to be somebody who people look at as a go-between, a connection, the guy who's the middleman between them and God, and you're a representation of God. And so think about this in terms of these guys. They're not going into the priesthood because they have a inclination to find God, right? These guys are hardcore pedophiles. I mean, think about that. Putting out child pornography that's taking it a step beyond and then this ritualistic some of these abusers are torturing the kids on top of it so it's satanic so it goes beyond just abuse it becomes satanic abuse and so you understand this it's the exact opposite it's inverting what the church is supposed to represent and then they just put these guys in another parish to do the same sort of damage Again, think about all these things. It goes beyond just an incident here where they had a couple of bad apples where pedophiles are recruiting pedophiles into their organization, where it is becoming a part of like NAMBLA. There's a subset, or really the whole organization is filled with pedophiles, right? Or pedophile enablers. And so that it ceases to be a legitimate religion. I mean, religions are... Again, you look at all the history of the Catholic Church going back centuries, it shouldn't exist any longer. I'll get into that. Let's go back to this woman's report. Um, the grand jury report also says that children were raped in places of worship, in schools, they were raped in diocesan owned vehicles, and that they were groomed to be victims through diocesan uh, retreats and programs. And it says that bishops like Cardinal Whirl were immersed in this cover up and went to great lengths to keep sexual abuse a secret. Uh, one thing I saw uh, of note, it looked like some of the abuse that happened in the late 70s and early 80s uh, on a church 
church at the north side, the mother actually went to Pittsburgh police and said that her two sons, a pair of brothers, uh, were being molested and raped by priests. And so she filed a report with police, but then decided to retract that report because she sh says she was threatened by the church. She was threatened by the church and the church told her to not go to police, that the church should handle it. So here's the bottom line with this, that when you grow up in a religion, the religion has overwhelming power in your life, especially if your family is devoted to that religion. And that religion represents your contact or connection to God. And often you're told that that religion is the only path towards God. And so everything about that religion and what you experience in that religion is godly in nature, or you consider it to be from God. And so when you have that kind of authority, and then you employ pedophiles, that you populate your organization with people in authority who are pedophiles or pedophile enablers, and then you have this like completely wrecked organization now. Again, it could have been wrecked earlier because of the way that the church behaved. Going away from godly principle, all these things, and all religions that do this. When you get into crusades, you get into witch hunts, you get into abuse, you have a military, you get into politics, all of these things. Once your religious or spiritual organization starts manipulating and being a part of material events and influencing them, and they get away from the divinity, the spiritual aspect of what they're supposed to be doing, then the complete system is corrupt. And this has happened pretty much to every major religion, that it becomes corrupted because it starts to go away from its spiritual roots and its spiritual teachings and starts to engage in power grabs, right? And that's what's happened here in all these religions. They want money power, they want influence over politics and people's lives. But for these individual families and parents, they believe that the church represents God to them. They go there every Sunday, whatever it is. They get involved in activities. They serve their children up as altar boys and all the rest. I grew up Catholic, so I understand the system. And now I had no problems. My mom, she had prayer meetings at her house with all these nuns, and nuns prayed for me and my family. And I feel like those prayers, my grandmother and my mom said the rosary for years those prayers ended up helping me find my spiritual path after I you know started drinking using drugs and just not thinking about God at all I went through a period where I was going to prayer meetings when I was in eighth grade and then I started using smoking pot and drinking when I was a freshman in high school into my 20s like there's a funny story where my parents had a prayer meeting at our house and there was like all these people there's probably like six or seven nuns and I was a freshman in high school. I was like five foot. And I went to my first kegger, like the first time I ever got drunk. I drank like one beer and I was already drunk. And I played beer pong and I was just guzzling beer. And I weighed like 100 pounds. <laughs> and I staggered up the stairs through all this group of people. I mean, literally, I, could bear, I couldn't walk. I was crawling up the stairs. Went into my room and just started throwing up off the side of my bed. I was, couldn't even stand. <laughs> which is kind of funny my my room smelled like beer for like two years <laughs> well anyways i had an i had an okay experience a good experience with the catholic religion my mom again religious person helped me have a uh a foundation like swami vivekananda the famous indian saint said again paraphrasing a religion is a great thing to be born in but a horrible thing to die in because you have to move from religion to spirituality, which is a direct connection to God. And all these religions act as a middleman. And because they're a middleman, they have power over your life. And they can bribe and manipulate you and say things like, you're going to hell if you report these priests. Because these priests in every country don't enter the criminal justice system. How many priests have actually gone to prison for their abuse? Very few of them. And very few of them have been defrocked. <laughs> they weren't defrocked. I mean, think about like that. They wouldn't even lose their job. And so if you understand this, this is because they represent an authority that they don't have. 
They don't have any more ability to connect you to God than anybody else. In fact, less than because they are deviant. They've become satanic in their power and their manipulation and these things that they fall in love with, the wealth and all the rest of it. And so my older sister married an ex-priest. So that's something that's interesting. And he's a good guy. And they had a couple of kids. They're older now. They're One of them is about to be married. And he suffered a lot of backlash for leaving the priesthood. But some of the things that this, some of this problem is because and they made an economic decision not to have priests marry. It's unnatural to not marry. It is something where you have to have a material life. I stress this. I've said this about my uh, heartfulness meditation. We're supposed to have two wings. There's no clergy. There's no people who are running away from life. They're not sannyasis, which is a word for this in India, where you're running away from material life, going to an ashram, going out to the woods, going to a monastery, and not having a family life, not having a job, not co contributing to society, not doing work. There is no place for somebody being just a spiritual leader. Maybe after they retire, they continue on with this work, but you should be a spiritual person and a contributor to society. Raising children, again, think about all the spiritual people, people who had an inclination to be with God that didn't have any kids. And so when they don't have kids, they don't influence their children. Children don't grow up in a household where people who are spiritual are, you know, their parents, which is a, a wonderful thing for children, to have parents that are spiritual in nature. And so this idea that the Catholic Church had of not allowing their priests to marry came from they didn't want to have to turn property over to their children or have to support the family after the priest died or whatever it might be. So they decided, again, you would work your whole life in a congregation, you would have housing and things like this, you would retire, and where would your family go? You didn't have any property, you didn't have anything, right? And so them having children was a huge problem. The Catholic Church recognized they have all this property, this very important real estate all over the world, so they made a financial decision not to allow priests to marry. And so when you don't allow people to marry, then that becomes where you're excluding people who want to have healthy relationships, who are, you know, heterosexual and things like this. And so instead of recruiting people who would be inclined to have a normal, healthy, natural sexual relationship, they have people that don't care about marrying because they're attracted to children. And so again, you slowly have these pedophiles entering into your organization. Your organization's old and corrupt and all these things on top of it. It's had a lot of problems. And so again, the pedophiles stop populating your organization, which attracts more pedophiles. The church develops a pedophile-friendly policy and how they deal with pedophiles who are caught. And so this is where you are. This is the Catholic Church. And if the Pope was a true spiritual man, he said, it's time to call it. We've completely corrupt. It's beyond fixing, right? They can't fix this. They've lost faith. They've lost trust in people all over the world. And it's just a dying organization. No longer represents anything to do with God. It's money, power, demonic energy, things like this. It's been corrupted. It's been compromised. And all religions get compromised, especially in the Kali Yuga. You have to stay pure in the sense that it's just about spirituality. It's just about connecting people to God. It's not about money. It's not about property. It's not about politics. It's not about influencing society in one way or another. You just help people connect to God and that's enough. If you have an organization that connects people to God and they are connected to God, then they'll be good people and they'll change society in a positive way because they're connected to God and their actions, their characters will be influenced to the better. They'll become better people, make better decisions, and it uplifts the whole, it can uplift a whole city, a whole town, just the people around them. And so if you have lots of people that are being connected to God, the whole world would change. You don't need any of this manipulation, you know, let's do it in politics. 
the vibrations change. Everybody goes to a higher level of consciousness. People pull each other up. People pull you know, other people up to a higher level of consciousness. And this is just the wonderful aspect about connecting people to God. You don't need any of these things. You don't have to manipulate social structures and things like this. People will start to, wayward people will just, when they're connected to God, their addictions will fall off. They start making better decisions. They change their lives and things like this. This is what you need. But the Catholic Church represents the opposite of this in all religions. But this is horrific in the sense that it is a world global pedophile ring. All right, this is Paul Romano, definitely reporting from the apocalypse. Everyone have a blessed day and be grateful.